a good day to our friends at St James's Nursing Home. It's nice to be with you again with our gospel singing and gospel message video from Balmany Gospel Hall. Uh, thanks for the opportunity again to speak with you. Uh, and uh, I'm going to uh, open today, we're going to listen to uh, one of my favourite hymns, uh, and it goes like this, In loving kindness Jesus came, my soul in mercy to reclaim, and from the depths of sin and shame, through grace he lifted me. Uh, so we'll listen to uh, this as our opening hymn, uh, and then we'll have our message. Thank you. 
chapter 2 and it's verses 5 and 6. I read there, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Hope that God will uh, trust, that God will bless the reading of his word and will give help as we think briefly about these verses that we've read. Um, they're great verses and a very encouraging verses because they put all the emphasis on the Lord Jesus Christ. They tell us that he is the mediator between God and men. But as we read those verses and as we consider them together, I uh, just want to think with you about that word mediator. There's one mediator between God and men. But what is a mediator or mediation? It's a process of bringing two sides together. It's a process of 
of bringing two sides who are at opposite ends, two sides who hold different views, two sides who are opposed to one another, and about bringing them together. And the mediator is the one who brings those two sides together. So if the Lord Jesus is the mediator between God and men, well that raises the question, why was the mediator required? Why is it that the Lord Jesus Christ is the mediator between God and men? Why is it that I said that uh, mediation takes place between two sides who, who disagree, who are opposed to one another? Why is it that there is that uh, disagreement, that opposition between God and mankind? Well, to, to go back to, to the very beginning, it all stems back to the Garden of Eden. And there we have, uh, in the scriptures recorded for us, we have the account of Adam and Eve. And God had created them and placed them there in that garden. And we read there that Adam and Eve, they had a very close relationship with God. There was no disagreement. There was no opposition. In fact, they walked in the cool of the evening. Uh, it records for us there that they would walk together in the garden. That God uh, would descend and would walk with them in the garden. And there would be that fellowship. There was that relationship. There was that closeness. And there was no need for a mediator. There was no need for mediation. Um, because there was a harmonious relationship there but we know we're familiar with the story how that adam uh, how that eve was was tempted and she took of the fruit and she gave it to adam and adam sinned and we're reading romans that wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin and so death is passed upon all men for all have sin sin has come in and has created that enmity that that position uh, whereby man and God are opposed. Isaiah tells us that our iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you. Sin has come in and has broken that relationship that we, uh, that humanity previously enjoyed, that fellowship, and it has been broken. And it's because of sin, and that is the reason that we need that mediator. Sin has placed us at odds with what God would have for humanity. God's standard is one of, of holiness. God's standard is one of, of righteousness and of sinlessness. And we know that we have all sinned. The, the Bible tells us that we have all come short of God's glory. All have sinned and come short of God's glory. And so that places us at the position of being at odds with God. That places us in a position of needing a mediator but the scripture tells us here that there is a mediator the mediator is a man Christ Jesus who gave himself a ransom for all you know we read in Isaiah over in chapter 1 we read there that the Lord says to the people come now and let us reason together saith the Lord though your sins be as scarlet they shall be white as snow though they be red like crimson they shall be as will come now and let us reason together if you think of that process of mediation uh, you've got the two sides sitting down at the table to to offer uh, their position to to discuss the issue and you have that here the Lord says come now and let us reason together God really is is inviting us to the table and is inviting us to discuss uh, to discuss terms but the terms have already been laid out they're very clear um, God is holy and God is just and he must punish sin he must deal with sin righteously but he says here that though your sins be as scarlet they shall be as white as snow though they be red like crimson they shall be as wool so how is it that we can go from a state of, of being uh, scarlet, um, red like crimson? How can it be that we are so deeply stained with sin? How can it be that we can be washed and that we can be purified and that we can be white as snow <clears throat> or, or as wool? Well, the verses that we read give us an insight into that. There is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ has met all of God's demands at Calvary. I said that God is righteous and God must punish sin and deal with sin righteously. 
Well, the Bible tells us that the Lord Jesus Christ bore that righteous judgment. That he took upon himself the sins of us all and he bore our iniquities. He bore our sins at Calvary. And the Lord, the, the, God, the God of heaven, dealt out to the Lord Jesus Christ our sins. He treated him as if he were sin. Even though he had no sins of his own, he was made a sin. He was treated like sin. And he bore the wrath of God. He has met his demands. And so if we think of that process of mediation, if we think of that process of, of agreeing terms, the terms are very easy to agree to. We come to the table and we reason together and God says, though your sins be as scarlet, they should be white as snow. Because the Lord Jesus Christ has borne the righteous judgment of God, there is nothing asked of us. There is nothing, uh, God does not make any demands of us. We can't bring anything to the table. We have nothing to offer. But he has paid it all. He has done everything that is needed. And so when we come to the table, when we come to reason together, all that we can do, all that is asked of us, is to accept that, to accept those terms. You know, he doesn't ask anything of us. There's no payment can be made. No righteous living can achieve it. And the Lord says, come let us reason together. He sets before us our sin. He sets before us all our unrighteousness. And yet at the same time, he sets before us the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The blood of our mediator, the one who goes between the two parties. The one who uh, presents to God the Father his blood. And the one who presents the work at Calvary and says, I have, I have paid the debt, I have done everything. And the one who comes to us and he presents the same blood on the same cross. And he says, I have done everything, I have paid the debt. And if we accept that, then we can have salvation. If we accept everything that the Lord has done for us at Calvary, then we can be washed, that we can have our sins which have seen us so deeply removed, and we can be white as wool. We can have that complete uh, guiltlessness, the complete righteousness, because of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us at Calvary. And just to continue that thought of, of the mediator, and of the thought of the table and the discussions, we have another offer in Isaiah. And chapter 55, it says, Everyone that's thirsty, come to the waters. And everyone that has no money, come buy and eat. Ye come buy wine and milk without money and without price. That verse just simply is saying, what do you need to fulfill your needs? What do you need for life, for food and for drink? He says, what do you need for life? Come and have it without price. You know, to take that into the gospel, what we need for our life is salvation. What we need for our life is to have our sins forgiven. The Lord Jesus Christ calls himself, uh, to continue the analogy here that we have of food and of water, he calls himself the living water. He calls himself the bread of life. He is everything that we need to survive. He is everything that we need to sustain our life. And he says to us, come buy without money. And without price. The price has been paid. No money is required. We just simply need to come and accept it. But if we go on in that chapter in Isaiah chapter 55, it says to come and, and to buy and there's no money and there's no price required. But it goes on and it says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. You know, that's all that God asks of us. That's all that is required, is that we return from our unrighteous ways, from our wicked ways, and return to the Lord. And he will have mercy upon us, and he will abundantly pardon us. You know what a message of hope this is? That if we will simply turn from our sins, and turn back to God, he will abundantly pardon us. And it's all because of that one man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all. The one man who is the mediator between a broken and a lost humanity and a righteous and holy God. The one who brings the two sides together. Who has satisfied God's judgment and God's wrath against sin. Who has satisfied God's holy standard and has satisfied our needs for a saviour. 
What a wonderful saviour the Lord Jesus Christ is. If you're not saved today, I commend them to you. If you're not saved today, I would extend this invitation to seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Because our God will have mercy and he will abundantly pardon. Because the Lord Jesus Christ has done it all at Calvary. If you're not saved today, I trust that you'll put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And know what it is to have that pardon, to have your sins forgiven. And that you might enjoy the peace of God which passes all understanding and have the hope of an eternity in heaven. The Lord bless you and I trust that this word will be a help to you.